Context menu commands is one of the best way for your Discord bot to quickly take actions on a specific user or a message on Discord, and surprisingly, they are quite simple to implement. In today's video, we'll create two context menu commands for our Discord bot using Discord.js. The first context menu can be used when right-clicking on a user and the other by right-clicking on a message. Before we get started, if you don't have a Discord.js project set up, then I'll have a link to a GitHub repo down below where you can clone the starter files. So let's get started by creating a standalone file, which we're going to be using to register our context menu commands. Just like slash commands, these must be registered as well, and you can register them to a server or globally. So let's create this file and call it register commands.js. And the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to import env slash config so that we can use our environment variables. The next thing that we want to do is import a few things from discord.js. The first thing is going to be the context menu command builder. The next thing is going to be application command type. This will help us choosing what type of context menu command that we want to create. The next thing that we need is rest to communicate with the discord API. And finally, we need routes. The first thing that we want to do is, of course, define an array for our context menu commands. So I'm going to create a variable called commands data. And in here, we're going to be passing in our context menu command builder classes. So the first element is going to be new context menu command builder. And onto this, we're going to be chaining a few methods. The first is going to be set name, which is going to be the name of our context menu command. Now, unlike slash commands, you can use capital letters and you can even use spaces. So the first command is going to be targeted for users, which means it's going to be triggered by right clicking on users. So this command could be something like user information. Now, this command is not actually going to have any functionality. All it's going to do is just reply, but I'm going to show you how to get the user information as well. The next thing that we want to do is set the type. So for that, we're going to chain a method called set type. And in here, we're going to pass application command type dot. And then we can choose what type of context menu command that we want. In this case, we're going to choose user because we want to be able to trigger this command by right clicking on a user. Now we can go ahead and copy this command and we'll paste it down here. Now this command is going to be for messages. So let's go ahead and change the type to application command type dot message. And we're also going to change the name to something like, let's say, translate message, because that's a pretty good feature to have. So this is pretty much all the commands that we're going to have. Now, I do want to mention that using this will replace your slash commands. So if you do have slash commands that you're manually registering, then it's highly recommended that you use your slash command builder over here, or you can just pass in your command objects. Now let's go ahead and define our rest which is going to be new rest. And then in here you can pass in a version, but I'm just going to leave this the way it is. And we also need to set a token. So for that, we're going to chain a method called set token. And for that, it's going to be process.env.token. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is we're going to create an iffy, which is an immediately invoked function expression. And to make sure that this function is called, make sure to have some trailing parentheses at the end. Now, this function is going to be asynchronous. And inside this, we're going to have a try catch block. If there is an error, we're just going to console.error and then pass in the error message. And then inside the try block, we're first going to add a console log. And this console log will say refreshing commands, or you could say refreshing context menu commands. And right below this console log, what we're going to do is register our context menu commands with our rest object. So we're going to say await rest.put. And in here, we're going to pass in, first of all, our routes. So it's going to be routes.application commands. Now, if you want to register these commands to a specific server, you can say application guild commands. However, for that, you're going to have to pass in your bot ID as well as your server ID. In this case, I'm going to be registering it globally. So I'm going to be using application commands. And for that, all we need is our bot ID, or in other words, our client ID. My client ID is stored in my .env file under client ID. And for that, what I'm going to be using is process.env.client underscore ID. The second argument to this put method is going to be an object. And this object is going to have a body. And this body is going to be our commands data. 
So let's go ahead and put it right here. After this, our commands should be registered. So I'm going to console log and say successfully registered context menu commands. So that's pretty much it for this file. Let's go ahead and save it and try to run it using node register commands.js. So it says successfully registered context menu commands. And if we go over to Discord, now if we right click on a user, we're going to have an app section in which we're going to have our command. Of course, clicking on it won't actually trigger any command because we haven't written any code for it. And also for messages, if I send a message and if I right click on it, you can see we have an apps option as well for translating this message. Now let's go ahead and handle all of these commands that we just registered. So inside our index.js file, we're going to go ahead and create a new event listener. And this event listener is going to be interaction create. This is going to give us the interaction object as the parameter. And of course, the first thing that we want to do is we want to check for the type of interaction. If you remember, we have a bunch of interaction types. One is a slash command. We also have a message context menu command, as well as a user context menu command. Now, the first thing that we're going to be using this for is a message context menu command, which is our translate message command. And to do that, we're going to be using if not interaction dot is message context menu command. And this is a method. So if this is the case, we're going to return. So basically what this means is if this interaction is not a message context menu command, then we can go ahead and return right below this. We now need to check the command name. If you remember our message context menu command is called translate message. So let's go ahead and copy this inside our index.js file. We can say if interaction dot command name exactly equals to translate message, then we can go ahead and handle this command. So the first thing that we want to do inside of this condition is get the message that was used to trigger this interaction. So for that, we can go ahead and create a variable called target message. And this is going to be interaction dot target message. It's actually as easy as that. So we can do whatever we want with this target message. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and reply to this interaction. And I'm going to say something like original message, and then I'm going to pass in the target message. And then in a new line, I could say something like translated message, which could be something, something. Of course, I'm not actually translating the message. This is just a test command to show you how context menu commands work. So let's save this file and try to run it. If I now head over to discord and I use my previous message as a test message, I can right click on it and go to apps, then click on translate message. As you can see, it says original message and then the message that I sent. And then it also says translated message. So that's how message context menu commands work. Let's now take a look at how user context menu commands are going to work. We can go ahead and remove this previous code. And instead of saying is message context menu command, we're going to say is user context menu command. So honestly, just like the previous one, what we have to do is we have to check for the command name. So in this case, it's going to be interaction dot command name exactly equals to in this case, I believe the command name was user information. And if this is the case, let's go ahead and fetch our target user, which was used to trigger this interaction. So we can say const target user, and this is going to be interaction dot target user. Now you can use target user or target member. The difference is target user is a general discord user object, while a target member is a guild member object. So you also have access to the server object. I'm just going to use target user because I'm not really using any server properties. And in this case, I'm going to go ahead and reply to this with a few user information. So in this case, we could say something like username, and then we can pass in target user dot username in a new line. We can also pass in the ID by saying target user dot ID. And in another line, we can say user tag, and this might be going away soon. So you might want to change this. And this could be target user dot tag. Now, I believe if you're using target member, you're going to have to add a dot user before actually accessing the user object. However, if you're using target user, just like me, you don't have to do that. Let's save this and let's try to rerun this file. Back in Discord, I'm going to right click on my user profile and go to apps, then click on user information. I'm now going to get the information based on what user I right clicked on. So I can right click on this bot and try to get the user information and it will also get this information as well. So that's about it for context menu commands. 
If you need any help with your code, then be sure to join my Discord server and ask your questions in the help channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.